Okay, so this is going to be a podcast on simplifying and verifying trigonometric identities. Alright. So here's a warm up for you. What are the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent? Sine x over cosine x equals. What is the first identity you would use to simplify sine x times cosecant x minus sine x? All of these are here to test your fundamental knowledge of the trig identities, because that's what you'll be using to solve these. Okay, so work those out, and let's move on. Okay, here's a mnemonic to help you remember how to solve these. Fit. First, you're going to figure out which side to simplify. Then you're going to isolate the pieces, so break it into parts and look at what each individual thing can be turned into based on the identities. Then you're going to get into terms of sine and cosine. Some tips for you, know your fundamental identities so you can pick them out quickly and simplify these. Um, again, put into terms of sine and cosine. The reason you want to put in terms of sine and cosine is because most of your identities involve both of these, and so if you do that, you're better able to manipulate them into something else. And keep in mind the side you're not changing, because this is going to be your goal. Okay, questions. How do you know which side to simplify? You want to look for the more complicated side, so you can simplify it down rather than expand it out. Um, this can be told by the number of terms, how they're related, like is it multiplication and division versus addition and subtraction. And you can also look for common identities that you know how to solve. So if you see a square and you know it's a Pythagorean, then you might want to go with that side because you already know how to solve it. And then also, how do you know which identity to use? And this really just takes practice. Um, the more you work with these, the quicker you'll be at recognizing these identities and the easier it'll be for you. Okay, a refresher on what the identities actually are. So here are your reciprocal identities, your quotient identities. So here we have tan x equals sine x over cosine x, cotangent x equals cosine x over sine x. Pythagorean, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, 1 plus tan squared x equals secant squared x, and 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. Okay, here are your even and odd identities. The thing to remember about these is that a negative sign on your angle will make the whole term negative, except in the case of cosine and secant. Those are always going to stay positive. So if you just remember those two, you'll be fine on your even and odd identities. Okay, so we're going to go through some examples. This first one is a simplifying problem. Cosecant squared x times 1 minus cosine squared x. So the first thing you want to do here is break it into pieces. If we look at the first piece, cosecant squared x, you can see that it's a reciprocal identity, and when you, when you use that identity, you get 1 over sine squared x. Okay, the second part has a square, so I'm going to assume it's a Pythagorean, and we can also turn that into sine squared x. When we do that and multiply them, our sine squared x's are going to cancel, and we get 1 over 1, which equals 1. So that one's pretty easy. Okay, example two is a simplification problem. It's kind of cut off at the top, but that says 1 minus cosine squared x over secant squared x minus 1. Both of these have squares. We're going to say both of these are Pythagorean identities. When you look at those identities, and maybe do a little manipulating, you're going to get sine squared x over tangent squared x. Then you're going to use a quotient identity to expand tangent squared x into sine squared x over cosine squared x. Then since we have a double stacked fraction, we're going to flip and multiply. When we do that, our sine squared x's cancel, 
we get cosine squared x over 1, which is cosine squared x. Okay, so here's a verification example. We have secant of theta times cotangent theta equals cosecant of theta. So we're going to turn both of these into their reciprocal, 1 over cosine theta and 1 over tan theta. Now there are two ways of looking at 1 over tan theta. You can look at it as cotangent theta, which by its quotient identity is cosine theta over sine theta, or you can look at it as 1 over sine theta over cosine theta, which of course you just flip into cosine theta over sine theta. Either way, when you multiply, your cosine thetas are going to cancel, and you're going to end up with 1 over sine theta, which is cosecant theta. Okay. Example 4 is another verification problem. We have cosecant of negative x over secant of negative x equals ne the negative cotangent of x. So we have negative cosecant of x on top and positive secant of x on bottom. It's positive because based on your even and odd identities, secant always stays positive. So we're going to change both of those into their reciprocal identity, so we get negative 1 over sine x over 1 over cosine x. Flip and multiply, you get negative cosine x over sine x equals negative cotangent of x by the quotient identity for cotangent. Okay. Alright, example 5 is another verification problem. We have tan x times cotangent x over cosine x equals secant of x. This one's pretty easy because tan x and cotangent x cancel out. Drawing that out for you, tan x over 1 times 1 over tan x is going to equal 1 over 1. So we just get the 1 on top over cosine of x, which is equal to secant x by the reciprocal identity. Okay. Here are some exit questions for you. These are a little bit more challenging, but not too difficult. So good luck to you.